Hello, everybody. I decide、uh, to make a video on this important topic. I think that'll help many people out there today.、Uh, but as I'm making this decision and making this video, I also wanted to decide how I can begin、uh, on this important topic that I see so many people being swayed away by many teachings that are out there today. It seems like people are either scared of. Somebody disagreeing with them or division, but at the same time, people are creating division when it doesn't go along with what they believe. So, I want to talk today about、uh, a topic that I talk about often, and this is about、uh, trouble in relationships and marriages and divorce. And I do this not out of bitterness, but I do this out of、uh, really passion and desire to. Help people stay together and not have to go through the same hardships that I had to experience as a married man and believer of、uh, of Yahweh.、Uh, I want people to be aware of what's going on out there, and this is why I make videos on this topic. If it is,、uh, the Bible calls us to be watchmen, watchmen on a wall, and to warn people when something is not、uh, going the way it should be going. And and as a warning when something's happening, and we can't open up any door to the enemy coming in our house and destroying、uh, the structure of what Yahweh created. But many people、uh, and couples,、uh, married couples, have let that happen by destroying the root of their relationship、uh, through misguiding teachings and emotional、uh, misunderstandings and 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 so on. So I want to give everybody a strong warning and explain. Uh, what happened? So today we have two type of people. I used to say we have people that either believe in the Bible or they don't. People that believe in Yeshua as the Messiah or not. There's no in between. There's no neutrality with our Creator. Well, when we look at this on a relationship level, you have two type of people. You have people that believe in the、uh, in the、uh, gender roles as given to us in Scripture. And people that throw that out and just believe in all equal equal roles for everyone. There's one or the other. There's not really an in between because if you believe in between, then you don't believe in the gender roles that our Creator has given us. And today's world, you see more and more people. Everything from the from the dress co- the dress codes to people thinking men thinking that women women want to be like men and everything else, throwing out the gender. The genders that our creator created, from everything from、uh, physical appearance all the way to emotional appearance, all the way to、uh, even、uh, legal appearance of what a gender is meant to be. But our creator, it makes no mistakes, and he has never changed the gender and gender roles that he has created for us. Now, if you're one of those people that do not agree with with what the Bible says about a gender, and especially and specifically Uh, gender roles.、Uh, obviously, you'll disagree with this message, but my message isn't to have people agree or disagree with me. My message is to warn,、uh, warn men and women、uh, that the enemy is trying to destroy, destroy what Yahweh put together, and he's trying to destroy marriages. He's trying to destroy. Of families, he's trying to destroy the whole structure of what he created, and it、uh, begins and ends often with the understanding of gender roles in the scriptures. You have to understand that、uh, if you're flying a plane, there's a pilot and a co-pilot. There's a co- pilot and a co-pilot. That's the way it has to be. You don't be a co-pilot and. In the middle of the flight, start saying you want to be the pilot. It doesn't work that way, and if you continue to push that, the plane will go down very quickly. With you, the co-pilot, and the pilot on it, we have to understand、uh, what you signed up for, according to Scripture. We have to understand the pilot must be the pilot and must take responsibility of the pilot, and the co-pilot must understand. Being a co-pilot and take the responsibility and the actions of a co-pilot. You understand that any time I heard a, a preacher say this once, and it was excellent. Any time you have something with two heads, it's usually not something good. 
It's usually a monster or something with two heads or something. And this is the problem. The problem is that the Bible talks about a word or, or a principle that was given in the example of Yeshua, a wonderful Messiah, that was one of the greatest blessings for us to understand and see how we are to act as people and believers. And they have flipped that around where it's become a curse word to even talk about this topic. And that word is submissiveness or submission. You see Yeshua, the Messiah, is the most submissive person in all of the Bible, in all of the scripture, the most submissive person. And he spoke and lived more than any other person in all of scripture. In the, not the gender role, but the hierarchy role of scripture. And because the enemy is trying to confuse men and women, on the gender role, he's also trying to confuse men and women on, on the hierarchy and, and how it works in a scale of the idea of a co-pilot and a pilot. So we have to take the example of Yeshua, whose greatest lesson was love. Love of the Father, love of the Father's ways. And the Father's ways was a way of, of hierarchy and also submissiveness and also love, out of love. And decision and not emotion, one of the greatest lessons we can learn from Yeshua. But the TV media today and the news and everything else doesn't understand that. You see, if you mention a wife must submit to a husband, you get two kind of people. People that agree with what the Bible says or people that come up firmly against that. And this is the problem we have today. Well, if you're married or in a relationship and you want it to be successful from a biblical standpoint, you must follow the biblical principles of what the Bible says about this. And this is what it comes down to. The world has been duped and deceived by the devil to believe that the Bible is a book of mutual submission. And it is not a book of mutual submission when it comes to certain relationships and situations. Yes, we are all called to follow Yeshua, our wonderful uh, Messiah, and be submissive in our nature to our hierarchy, according to the biblical roles in scripture. We are called to be obedient to the guidelines and instructions of our creator, according to what he's put us in and where he's putting us. People often ask me, what Bible commands are we supposed to follow? All of them. I say, I'm a man. I can't follow the Bible commands that were for women and vice versa. But if I don't know if I'm a man or a woman or if I want to dispute that, well, then I got to dispute what commandments apply to me today and are applicable to me today. I'm not a farmer. So if there's a commandment about farming, it doesn't apply to me. So Hopefully we understand this, and I want to talk about uh, the issue today with this idea of mutual submission. It is not biblical, and it is uh, the antithesis to what the Bible talks about. Uh, and, and there's one particular book I want to discuss today that's created a tremendous problem, and I found a really nice article online that discussed it. And I was hesitant to mention this book for quite a while, but I recently... Uh, did a video about uh, a warning to men for the Proverbs 5 woman. And one of the comments, there's very many positive comments, but one of the comments under there was uh, that uh, I uh, have uh, issues with, with uh, women that I overly teach on this topic. And my topic is not about women being... Uh, negative or negative towards women in any way. It's men being aware and people being aware of how the enemy works and how to avoid getting ourselves into, into issues and traps and so on and issues that I've uh, created. Well, <clears throat> let me explain to you my situation so maybe you can understand how I've my eyes have been open to this topic so clearly and, and I can understand how so many people's eyes are closed to this. See, 
without even understanding relationships or 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 or, or biblical roles and so on and and without having good knowledge of these topics that I'm trying to teach people about I literally married a feminist I married a feminist and there were red flags all over the place and I I didn't know better and I did my best to make the best of this idea of mutual submission even though I spoke against it I still tried to for the sake of the the relationship make it as best as possible and there are two type of feminists there are self proclaimed feminists and then there are a, 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 a feminist who are feminists but don't necessarily understand uh, that they're feminist and they don't see that they're feminist and uh, so I was married to a feminist that believed in mutual submission and I did my best as the beta male to try to oheed to uh, for the sake of the relationship and uh, for the sake of the children and everything else to stick in that relationship. Well, it all came to a boiling point when uh, we were at a Feast of Tabernacles, a Sukkot uh, festival, and there was a midrash, and it was like uh, 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and there were a bunch of people in the room, and uh, my uh, ex-spouse was not there, and uh, I was taking part in this Bible study, and somebody said to me, well, they didn't say to me, the topic of the night was, uh, is, is what is the role of a woman? What is the role of a woman? With my knowledge of scripture, without even giving a second thought, I said the role of a woman is to be a helpmate. And I didn't think much, not, not, not much about it. And went on my daily evening and, and so on. And there were some other discussions and topics in the room that night, but I didn't think much about it. Well, the following day was, was the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles and we were departing. Uh, my ex-spouse uh, ended up crashing into a parked car. It wasn't a, a serious crash. It was just a, a dent situation. But doing the righteous thing as we waited there to find out whose car it was. They were parked where they shouldn't have been, first of all. <laughs> but we were trying to find out whose car it was and, and uh, assessing the situation. Uh, a lady walked by with a really negative, mean spirit. And uh, I, I would suggest demon-possessed, but that's uh, subjective. So she, she, she looks at uh, my, my ex-spouse and says, I heard what your husband said last night. You need this book. And handed her a book. And this was the... The, the one thing that my uh, feminist uh, wife at the time needed to make her feel good about her ideas of the Bible being a book that supports feminism. And that's when something changed in me. Because of all the topics I knew about and didn't know about, uh, I definitely knew uh, the the roles of, of of scripture and what it meant to be a covering, and I did my best to remain to be a covering for my family, and I now that was in jeopardy. That was in jeopardy when stuff was being done that I, as a spiritual leader of the household, did not agree with. I had to put my foot down because now not only was my uh, my ex-spouse putting herself in danger, but also my children were being put in danger because from a spiritual standpoint, there were disagreements. And I felt that the disagreements were, were dangerous enough to say something about it. And instead of my ex-spouse taking her biblical gender role and responsible role as a wife and submitting to my spiritual authority in the house. She continued to go against it, but now she had uh, uh, something behind it. She had this book. And I will just read to you the book and what it says. It basically, uh, I, I was very hesitant to talk about this because I don't want to give any, any, uh, popularity and notoriety to this book 
by some how somebody else will fall in the same uh, dreadful situation I fell into with uh, with with somebody who has these beliefs just feeling more empowered or a feminist feeling more empowered. But I will give you the name of the book right now and and pray against that happening. And I pray that anyone who uh, comes across this book would realize immediately and have their eyes open immediately to know this book is of the devil. It supports feminism and it has nothing to do with a scriptural uh, context, especially in, within relationships. And I just pray that uh, people be led to see how wicked this book is. And for those that have uh, already accepted this book as scripture through the deception of the demons, you know, I, I, I just pray as a brother and sister in Yeshua that uh, that your eyes would be opened and, and any th damage that has been done by this would be restored. So before I give you the name of the book, because I know everyone's excited to listen to the name of the book now and everything else, let's, uh, let me uh, open this up here. Let's go to the back cover, if, if the back cover's on here, and to see what you think about this. Let's see here. Because it was, it's the back cover alone that people should want no part of, no part of uh, of this when when they, when they hear something like this. Let's see. Okay, the back cover of, the, of cover of this book says "Protector, Nourisher, Boundary Setter, and Spiritual Guide," and it starts off. This is the back cover. This is the back cover. This is all I needed to read and hear to know that this was evil and wicked. And this is why there's so many issues today. Every woman knows she was designed for a special role, a role that has been de denied to her far too long. In this study of scripture, the author re-examines the Genesis account from the Hebraic perspective. This foundation supports a radical revision of the contemporary views about women. Women were designed to by, by God to guide, direct, and supply the boundary conditions for their man. They were designed by God to be the relationship managers of ma marriage. They are the ones who are intended to provide strength, shelter, and correction. Without understanding these roles, marriages will flounder and gender issues will remain unresolved. This book is for anyone who wants to know how to make a relationship work according to God's way. It's time for a change, and you can start right now. That's the back cover of this, this wicked book. And the name of the book is Guardian Angel by a fellow named Skip Moen. Guardian Angel by a fellow named Skip Moen. And I want to call out this with a big warning. This is, this is a wicked, wicked book with wicked information, but it's 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 gotten and 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 created a big problem. So let me forward to this story, and then I want to get into this book. And anyone that's watching right now, if you agree with this book or anything at all in this book, I I, I pray for you. I pray for you that 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 that. And it's not just women, because there are men that are deceived by this nonsense as well. And I pray for you. I pray for you. I just pray for you and your family. This is not of Yahweh. Uh, so, uh, so after what happened, so after what happened with me, anyway, as time went on, uh, you know, it wasn't this book that created my divorce, but it was definitely something that opened my eyes to the reality of what was going on here. And uh, my ex-wife had to take aside who she wanted to follow. Did she wanted to? Uh, follow the biblical teachings or did she want to follow the nonsense in his book and she made her choice and it ended up how it ended up and uh, we ended up did getting a divorce well i went back to that sukkot a year later now there were take it over maybe three thousand people at this sukkot festival and what had happened was uh, there was a big split there was a big split and this book and this demon lady walking around giving this book and telling people that about helpmate and all this stuff was was behind it. So the next year, they decided to have their own Sukkot, and many of the women were the leaders of that Sukkot. And uh, so it created a big split. And I've met more people in the Hebraic Roots movement that have had an issue uh, in their marriage and ended up in divorce because of this type of teaching. 
And it's not just the Hebraic roots, even in Christian church today. It's getting away from the gender roles, believing in mutual submission and all of this. It's created a tremendous problem. So I want to read. Uh, there's a great website out there called biblicalgenderroles.com, biblicalgenderroles.com. And I want to read uh, the heresy of Skip Moen and his book, Guardian Angel, and what they wrote. See, I have a friend, uh, uh, and uh, he, he uh, Daniel Bakken, he's a great Bible teacher, and he wrote a, re uh, a review of Skip Moen's book. And it was right on and just excellent review of his book. And I'll put the links below the video of that. And, and it said all it had to say. It was excellent. Uh, but uh, this this article I found very good. And I, I came upon it. And I said, it's time to let people know and warn people what's going on here today. So uh, an article starts off. And again, this is from Biblical Gender Roles, a wonderful website. It says, Skip Moen is pretty close to what I would call a Christian feminist cult leader. He certainly is not only a major teacher of Christian feminism, but he definitely has his unique brand of it. Skip Moen might be a loving husband and loving father to his children. I don't know him personally, but I don't have to know him personally to show that his teachings are not just minor differences of interpretation, but they are the very definition of heresy. What is the heresy that Skip Moen teaches? I am not the first Christian to take on Skip Moen's heresy, and I hope it won't be the last. But one of the best critical reviews of Skip Moen's work is by Daniel Bakken, and he gives a great synopsis of Skip Moen's false teachings when he writes, According to Moen, the wife's God-ordained role in the marriage, both before and after the fall, is to be the following things to a husband, his priest and spiritual guide, his spiritual director, his boundary setter, his confronter and corrector, his chastener, his protector and guardian, his rescuer, his owner and manager, his shield, his sustainer, his nourisher. Skip Moen, in his response to Daniel Bakken's critical review, confirms that Bakken, Bakken correctly captured the essence of the teaching, so we can be assured this is an accurate representative of Skip Moen's beliefs. According to Bakken, all of Moen's descriptions of the woman's role as the husband's priest and spiritual guide, provider, protector, etc., etc., are derived from his misunderstanding of the Elzar Canigo. What does Bakken offer to place? Uh, offer in place of my analysis. The heresy of Skip Mogan is that he teaches a complete role reversal for men and women. That what the scriptures teach. His entire doctrine position rests on one scripture. And Yahweh said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. Genesis 2.18. The English phrase helpmate is a translation of two Hebrew words, Esar Kandigado. I previously wrote an entire post on this and is an article at the website Biblical Gender Roles of what did Yahweh mean when he called women a helpmate for men. Where I dive into the meaning, Ezar Kedigdo, and I showed that the Hebrew phrase literally means a helper who is man's opposite. A helper who is man's opposite. The link will be below the video. The Bible tells us that we need to rightly divide or discern the word of Yahweh. Otherwise, we may run into danger of teaching heresy. And this, we're going to talk about how Skip Moen wrongly interprets the scriptures. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show yourselves approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided into the word of truth. I love the word studies in the Bible. I love studying the Hebrew and Greek languages, which are languages the Bible was originally written in. I love studying cultural backgrounds of the scriptures. I love the Old Testament, and I think it is just as important as the New. But there is a point where we can take a word by itself and get caught up in what we think it means, to the point where we ignore the context of how it was used in Scripture. So here is Skip Moen's error. He takes what he believes helpmate, or Esar Candigdo, 
means, and then instead of letting the scriptures themselves define what Yahweh meant by helpmate, he defines it himself. He then takes his raw definition and attempts to twist the entirety of the scripture to fit what he thinks it means. Yahweh defines what helpmate means for us in the scriptures. Skip Moen makes the mistake of not realizing that Yahweh interprets his own word. You don't need a Hebrew lexicon or degree in biblical doctrine to see that Yahweh clearly defines what he meant by calling women a helpmate for men. A helpmate is one that realizes she was made to serve a husband rather than him being made to serve her. 1 Corinthians 11.9 says, Neither was the man created for a woman, but the woman for the man. The first principle is where all the preceding com uh, commands regarding helpmates comes from. If a woman rejects this principle, then it is more than likely she will reject many other biblical commands regarding Yahweh's will and design of a woman as a helpmate to a man. A helpmate is one who regards her husband as her Lord and Master. 1 Peter 3, 1 and uh, to 5, 6 says, Likewise, ye wives, be subject to your husbands. For after this matter in the old time, the holy woman also who trust in Yahweh adorned themselves being subject unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well, are not afraid with any amazement. Because women are made for men as their helpmates, they are to regard their husbands as their lords and masters. Sarah, a godly wife, modeled this by calling her husband her Lord. A helpmate is one who submits to her husband as the church submits to Yeshua. And we see Ephesians, we see in Ephesians 5, 23 and 24, it says, Even as Yeshua is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body, therefore the church is subject unto Yeshua. So let the wives be to their own, uh, to their own husbands and everything. A woman who wants to be the helpmate Yahweh intended her to be recognizes that Yahweh wants her to model her relationship after the relationship of Yeshua and his church with her representing the church and her husband representing Yeshua. A helpmate is one who freely submits not only her will but also her body to her husband for his pleasure. 1 Corinthians 7, 3, and 4 says, Let the husband render unto the wife, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had not power of a body, but a husband. And likewise also the husband had not power of his own body, but of the wife. Let her be as loving, kind, and pleasant row, and let her, her breast satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. Proverbs 5, 19. A woman, when reflecting on the first principle that Yahweh made her for a husband, will freely give her body to her husband for his pleasure and comfort. A helpmate keeps herself beautiful for her husband in the same way the church adorns herself for Yeshua. Revelations 21.2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of the heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. A woman's beauty is some Balak of the beauty of the church. And the same way that the church adorns herself for a husband, so too Christians' wives ought to adorn themselves for their husbands. A helpmate keeps her husband's home and bears his children. It says in Titus 2, 4, and 5, that they may teach the young woman to be discreet, chaste, and keepers of a good home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh be not blasphemed. Second, uh, 1 Timothy 5.14 says, I will therefore that the young woman marry, bear children, guide the house, and give none occasion to the adversary to speak <clears throat> reproachfully. And it says in Proverbs 31.27, she looks well in the ways of her household and, uh, and eats not the bread of idleness. To her primary duties, the two of her primary duties as a helpmate, to man is for a woman to bear children, manage the domestic affairs of the home. A helpmate will not bring shame to her husband. As we look at in Proverbs 12, 4, it says a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that make it ashamed is rottenness in his bones. When a woman speaks disrespectfully to her husband or acts in ways that makes her husband ashamed, 
as it is to rottenness in his bones. Instead, a woman that praises her husband and respects her husband is his crown. A helpmate will not consistently contend or be angry with her husband. Proverbs 21, 19 says it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a conscientious, conscientious and angry wife. When a woman is conscientious and consistently arguing with her husband and bucking his every decision or holding grudges against him and being angry with him, this is the opposite of Yahweh's intent for her as his helpmate. A woman who is surrendered to the spirit of Yahweh and designed for her to help meet will not be a nag to her husband. A helpmate is one who has a meek and quiet spirit towards her husband. First Peter 1. And three, four says, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of uh, plaiting their hair, of wearing of gold, or of putting on a, uh, of apparel, but let it be hidden the man of the heart, that which is corruptible, even the adornment of the meek and quiet spirit, which is the sight of Yahweh, uh, the sight of Yahweh of great price. While a helpmate should keep herself beautiful for a self, for her husband. Her greatest beauty is that of her inner self, her meek and quiet spirit towards her husband. A helpmate is one whose affection is towards her husband. That they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, Titus 2 verse 4. A woman in his role as a helpmate to her husband will not only submit and obey to him, but she will also be affectionate towards him. A helpmate is one who, who, who has her husband's trust. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures here. I'm reading this wonderful article and it's from this wonderful website. Proverbs 31.1 says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her price is far above rubies. Her heart of a husband that do it safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. A godly wife, a wife who is fulfilling her duty and helpmate to her husband will always have his back. He can trust that she will never betray him. A wife in a duty as a helpmate should be her husband's greatest cheerleader. A helpmate is one who offers her husband godly counsel. Every wise woman builds her house, but a foolish pluck it down with her hands. Proverbs 14.1 She opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. Proverbs 31.26 As a jewel of gold and a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Proverbs 11.22 A wife who is exercising her role as a helpmate Yahweh intended her to be will speak wise and godly counsel to her husband, but she will also practice discretion in knowing when to speak and when to hold her tongue. A helpmate is one who listens to her husband's godly counsel. And if they will learn anything, let them Ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak at church. 1 Corinthians 14, 35. While women should learn from their pastors and other godly women, as well as the first person they should look as as well, the first person they should look for spiritual guidance is their husband, if he is a believer. A woman who is consistently going behind her husband's back seeking counsel that will counteract her husband's spiritual teaching is going against Yahweh's design for her as a helpmate. To her husband. A helpmate is one who submits to and receives her husband's chastisement and correction. We go into Job 2.10. That says, but he said unto her, thou speak it as one of the foolish women speaks. What shall receive good at the end hand of Yahweh? Shall she we not receive evil? All this did not Job sin with his lips. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, am I... In, in, in Yahweh's stead, who had this withheld these things, fruit of the womb, Genesis 30, verse 2. And then 2 Samuel 21 to 23, and David said unto his Mechel, It was before Yahweh which chose me before the Father and before his house to appoint me ruler of all the people of, uh, uh, of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I, pay, I play before Yahweh. And I will yet be more uh, vile than thus. And I will be best in mind and on sight and of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of. Of them shall I be held in honor 
Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children unto the death, into the day of her death. 2 Samuel 6, 21 to 23. A woman in her role as a helpmate, will you uh, humbly accept the rebuke or correction of a husband when he sees sinful behavior in her life? A helpmate is one who looks to her husband for nourishment and protection. So ought men love their wives as their own bodies. He ought to love his wife as he loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it even as Yahweh and, and the, the church. Ephesians 5, 28 to 29. While the modern meaning of the English word cherish has romantic connotations, the Greek that this word is translated from is the idea of protection. A wife in her role as helpmate will depend on her husband and will look to him for nourishment and protection as the church depends on Yeshua for its nourishment and protection the same way. Conclusion. As we can see from Yahweh's word, Skip Moen's teaching, the wife's God-ordained role in the marriage, both before and after the fall, is to be the following things to her husband his priest, his spiritual guide, his spiritual director, his boundary setter, his confronter and con corrector, his chastener, his protector and guardian, his rescuer, his owner, manager, his shield, his sustainer, his nourisher. It's here, see, plain and simple. In fact, it would be correct to say that it is complete opposite of what Yahweh's word teaches about the roles of men and women as Yahweh des, uh, designed them to be. If you read all the scriptural passages I have cited above, this is what the truth of Yahweh's word actually is. The husband's God-ordained role in the marriage, both before and after the fall, is to be the following things to his wife, her spiritual guide, her spiritual director, her boundary setter, her confronter and corrector, her chastener, her protector and guardian, her rescuer, her owner and manager, her shield, her sustainer, and her nourisher. Pray that Yahweh will raise up strong men to combat this wickedness that is creeping into our homes. Yahweh speaks of men like Skip Moen who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3 verses 6 and 7 says, For this sort are they which creep unto houses. And lead captive silly women laden with sins, laid away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 7. How many silly women have been led astray by Skip Moen's teachings? The answer is far too many. Yahweh gives us our battle plan against such false teachers. And when he tells us to, it says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2 and 4, preach the word, be instant in season out of season, reproach, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers, having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and it shall be turned into fables. Be on the alert, stand in the faith, act like men, be strong. 1 Corinthians 6.13 Pray that Yahweh will raise up a new generation of godly preachers and husbands who will take back our homes and our churches for Yahweh and rid this poisonous Christian feminist teaching from our midst. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about this article uh, that, I, that I read here uh, from biblicalgenderroles.com. And uh, please, 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 this is a serious issue that, that's creeping into to the church today. Now, here's a great book I do recommend, and I think all men and women, especially women, would, would be blessed tremendously by this book. It's called Liberated Through Submission by P.B. Wilson. Liberated Through Submission by P.B. Wilson. Wonderful book. And if you, uh, if your marriage or your relationship has been affected in a negative way by the Christian feminist movement or the feminist movement in general. Uh, there's 
prayer is, is, a, is a, an amazing thing, as we know. And I feel for you that are dealing with this situation. And I know there are men and women that are suffering from this. I do believe in spiritual warfare. And I believe a feminism is of the devil. And there are demons that we allowed into our, uh, allow into our houses and to our lives and to our relationships. And I think the feminist movement or feminist thinking, which is the antithesis to Yahweh's word, is a is a demon is a demon activity, and I think we need to uh, reject it, rebuke it, kick it out of our houses, and get back to Yahweh's word. To Yahweh's word. I know men will think and say, "Well, what's the answer? What's the answer? What would I have done differently if I would have known this so clearly that I knew back then?" Our goal is not to keep books out of our wives' hands, and shouldn't be uh, to 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 do that. And that shouldn't be our goal. Our goal should be as men is to build up and teach our family uh, through example and through literal teaching uh, the word of our creator, the word of our creator and pray that the enemy not uh, distract or deceive our, our, our wives and our children and pray that we're not distracted by the Proverbs five women out there either. If we stick to Yahweh's word, read it daily with your family. Read it daily with your family and put it into action. And put it into action. It can be a, it, it, you can be successful and it can be a successful thing. You can't go wrong with Yahweh's instructions. You just can't. When it says, know the truth and the truth will set you free, it's that truth that will set you free. The way a per person acts versus their core values and understanding is an issue of the outwardly and the inwardly, the heart or the root. And the root must be pure if the outside is going to be pure. We need to remember this. We need to understand this. There are a lot of men out there falling for the same idea of, uh, of, of mutual submission and, 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 and all these equalness and all these roles that are against scripture for the sake of not being destroyed by family court if they end up getting a divorce or something like that. And it's just the way it is in today's world, folks. Like I said when we started, you either believe in the word of Yahweh or you don't. That's it. You either believe in the instructions and the roles of Yahweh or you don't. I'm, I'm blessed to say that there are people out there, men and women out there today, men that write articles like this, that stand up for the truth and call it out. And, and also uh, women out there that understand what it means to be a helpmate. And uh, when we do things according to Yahweh's way, it is a beautiful thing and we'll be blessed for it. So I just wanted to post this video as a warning to people, as a warning to people, not to run out and read the book, or books like that, no. But to stick to Yahweh's word and not get distracted by demon-possessed uh, uh, teachings and so on. All right? I pray that this will help help you all out there. And, and uh, anyone's willing to contact me if you need to discuss these things further, you know how to contact me through my website. All right, everybody. Have a blessed day, and Yahweh be with you this day and always. Shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world.